I introduced Marisa Seresny. Uh, she is a clinical researcher fellow at Henry Ford Health in Detroit. She is passionate about obtaining detailed outcome measure through her work as a sub-investigator for multiple vitrile clinical trials. The, the talk is about measurement of therapeutic response using the VASI in people with vitrile or scoping review. Uh, please. Thank you for your patience. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to present our work um, that we did at Henry Ford. Uh, I'm a clinical research fellow there working with Dr. Hamzavi. Uh, this is a scoping review with the VASI, a measurement of the therapeutic response in clinical trials. So let me introduce you to the VASI. It's a clinician-reported outcome measure used in vitiligo clinical trials, and it assesses the extent of depigmentation in the skin to measure the therapeutic response. It has a very strong track record, but this is only when it's used consistently in all the, between every study and all the raters. So we must do this right. Otherwise, we're measuring the difference in the outcome measure and not the measure of the therapy itself. So to fully understand my presentation, you must know how to calculate the VASI yourself. It's quite simple once you break it down. So the VASI is from zero to 100, and it is the sum of all the body regions of VASI. So it is the percent body surface area ranging from zero to the maximum of the region of the body times the degree of depigmentation, which ranges from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. So to break it down. Technical difficulty. Work. There. Okay. All right. So the VASI. There. It cannot be bigger than 100% of a body. There. So the body surface area goes through the rule of nines for each body surface region. And this can be approximated with the hand, fingertip, or thumb units. So one fingertip unit is 0.03% BSA, and the hand unit approximates 1% BSA. And the thumb unit is 0.1% BSA. And this is the degree of depigmentation that we use from zero to 100% depigmented. Okay, so we, answer, we aim to answer the following question. How is VASI applied in interventional clinical studies? To do this, we conducted a systematic search of all the databases uh, of all the interventional studies that use the VASI from 1946 to October 2020. The VASI was first published in 2004, so there were none before then, but this is a systematic search standard. The eligibility criteria is just that it was interventional and used VASI as an outcome measure, and it was in English and a complete uh, manuscript. We assembled all the frequencies and performed a descriptive analysis of the collected data. This is how we selected the articles. So we started with 367 that we found through the search in one manual for 368 studies, and then we went down to 100 in, uh, 186 after the duplicates removed, and we excluded 77 based on the, the basic criteria, then went to 109 and excluded 54 on full text review to include 55 studies. 
we found that the VASI was used worldwide. The highest amount of uh, country with the highest amount of VASI articles was Egypt at 14, followed by India at 10, and eight in, or nine in Iran and eight in the USA. We found many different types of studies. Therapy categories range from systemic orals, topicals, phototherapy, alternative medicine, and surgery. There were many study designs. We had RCTs, retrospective, and case series and case reports. We found that both subjects that were adults and pediatrics were included, but it is important to note that it has only been validated in adults and not yet in pediatrics. We also found that it has been used as a, a threshold for inclusion and exclusion criteria in studies. We found many variations or subtypes of the VASI. It is also important to note that only two have been validated, both the facial VASI and the total VASI. We also found some calculation errors. We did find a study that had a VASI over 100 and a body surface area that was not included. We found some variations in how BSA was established. There is different measurement tools. Some used an investigator's hand, some used a subject's hand. And some were done in person and some were done from photos. We just spoke, uh, Dr. Mohammed just spoke on the inter and intra-related reliability of the photos. And there is some evidence that the photos can underestimate BSA. Some studies also did not disclose the method. For the depigmentation establishment, some studies used repigmentation rather than depigmentation. And some used an unclear scale. There were some differences also in how the VASI was reported in the results section. Some used the delta VASI which is the difference between the time point and the baseline. Some use the percent change of the delta, how much it has improved. And some studies use the percent of patients who, who had the response endpoint. This last one here is from the FDA study on ruxolitinib. So this is likely how the FDA would prefer studies to be reported in the future. So in conclusion, there are considerable variations in VASI methods. We should especially focus on the establishment of BSA and depigmentation in the future to have consistent reporting outcome measures. These findings can be used as a foundation to improve clinician VASI training, and that will allow us to have rigorous data analysis worldwide and develop new therapies. This is essential to have results that are interpreted easily and compare studies between groups throughout the world. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, uh, thank you for doing this study. This has been really a problem for me over the years as I'm reviewing articles and, and seeing studies. One of the biggest problems I see is, um, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, is the fact that someone, many people take the BSA part of the VASI and just take that out and call that the BSA of the, of the body. Uh, and they'll actually list that the VASI was this and the BSA was this, but they'll actually take the exact BSA from the VASI and call that the BSA for the body which is absolutely correct, incorrect. I mean, if, you're, if your hand is 1% and the BSA is 1%, but your depigmentation is 50%, the actual BSA is 0 0.5. But actu people have actually taken that and called it a 1% BSA, which is extremely incorrect, but unfortunately that's what's happened, even recent studies. And so I think, you know, your, your study, hopefully you'll get this published to talk about all the fallacy, all the ways that the VASI is done incorrectly will really, I think, help people. Yes. And you know, the studies that have been done, it's almost like a waste of all the energy if we can't get an outcome measure that can compare and tell us what the results are. Right. So we'll really strengthen all of our research. Uh, I have one question. <clears throat> there are various modifications of VASI, and uh, in clinical practice, daily practice, uh, which modification do you use for your patient or recommend for us? So I do clinical trials, both investigator and industry initiated. Um, so we do the standard way that 
the industry tells us to do, essentially, that follows the 2004 Hamzavi paper. So we go through each section of the body, and we measure the depigment, or first we measure the BSA, and then the depigmentation of it. So we measure either using thumb units, or fingertip units, or hand units, and convert them all into the same so we can make a calculation. <laughs> And then we determine the depigmentation of each body region as a whole. Because a lot of the industry studies don't let us go lesion by lesion. This is how much depigmentation is there. We can have one more question. So, gentlemen, what we do is ultimately do a, a quick body surface as an analysis. That's what we use in clinic. So, obviously, what Marissa is doing is in clinical trials in clinic for a general flow of the patient, we just do a quick BSA assessment using your fingertip unit. Okay, thank you, Khalid, for a nice presentation.